I know we're not like the biggest fans of Brent Rooker, but the bat just plays, man. And it's a right-handed bat that you can slide in between. And Jim's mentioned it here, I think, this week when we were talking about Nick Gonzalez hitting cleanup. Brent Rooker can just slide into that four spot, hit in between a couple lefties. Because you've got O'Neill hitting third at this point with the lineup. You've got Rowdy hitting fifth. You got to be able to split them up. Brent Rooker's a guy that really does fit in the lineup, not so much defensively, obviously. And you can just look at Twitter and see all the opinions on that. But the bat just plays, man. The strikeouts are concerning, obviously. You don't want to add more strikeouts to this lineup, but you got to add more home runs somehow, and strikeouts are going to come with that. I think Brent, Brent Rooker's a, a good fit here. Um, I would welcome, I would welcome Brent Rooker. I would, I would welcome him with open arms. Uh, I don't really necessarily care that he's not that great of a defender. Well, I don't, let's, let's, that's, that's being, that's actually not being as harsh as he probably is. He's, he's an awful defender. Let's, let's kind of get that out of the way. So I, the bat is good enough though, that you live with it. Uh, and, and let's be, let's be honest. Like Andrew McCutcheon gets a day off every series anyways. Right. So. Rooker could still get plenty of DH time. You could even throw Kutch in the outfield once a week, right? If you wanted to, to kind of kind of keep Rooker a little fresh and, and keep Kutch fresh too. But you know, you 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 get him, you put him in right field, the bat's gonna play and it's gonna play really nice. Now, here's the thing. I don't I don't first off, Brent Rooker's gonna cost I, I think Brent Rooker's gonna cost quite a bit. Um, there, you know, hitters with with OPSs over 900 don't just grow on trees. He's one of the best power hitters in in the in the majors right now. He has a ton of control remaining, so that's another thing. Like it's this year, but then another three years of Brent Rooker. So you're looking at one. It's it's going to cost quite a bit for this guy, and he's he's rather limited outside the ability to basically just hit the ball for power, right? The other thing is, what is Oakland's... Like, why would Oakland trade him? Oh, I, if, if you're Oakland and you're thinking, and you're thinking like, all right, we're about to move to Vegas in a few years. We need people to be on that team who, who would draw crowds. Brent Rooker's one of them, and Brent Rooker's not costing them anything right now. Like, he's making league minimum. Uh, he's going to be in his first year of arbitration next year. Like, like the A's, the A's want cheap players, right? And Brent Rooker is a cheap player right now. And I just feel like they need, they would be, they would have to be blown away to deal Brent Rooker. Um, if you can get him and you can get him for a fair price, absolutely. He upgrades the lineup 100%. I'm in for it. I just think there are better fits for the Pirates right now let me add in something just real quick why do the A's trade him this year and for the people and again like i'm not i'm not their mouth piece i don't know if they're going to or not it could be very fair that he's going to be in a next wednesday as said in the comments but if you want the reason why they do it's because he has three years of control left it's because he's 29 years old why are they going to trade this guy as they're going into you know las vegas in a few years because by the time they're in vegas that's the year that he's going to get traded. Like they're not, they're not extending Rooker. You, you know what I mean? Like you trade him now because that way the pieces that you get for Rooker are the pieces that are walking into that Las Vegas stadium to be the new face of the franchise, you know, or part of the face of the franchise. That's why you trade Rooker now. That's just my counterpoint to the, you know, why do you not trade Rooker? He's not going to go anywhere. This is the ideal time to do it. He is 29. He's at his peak value with three years left of control. You do it now. Get the most you can. So that way you walk into Vegas. As we talked about the young bucks, the young A's, right? There you go. This is what you're going to sell the team to. You're not going to sell Las Vegas to Rooker and then trade him in that July <laughs> because you're not extending him and he's 32 years old, you know? So that's why. But I'm 100% with you too, Jim. Like, I would welcome, like, if the Pirates trade for Rooker, I am not going to sit here and say, this was terrible, his defense is bad, no, no, no. What I am saying, though, is I don't like the fit because of the defense with Reynolds, 
because the defense was Swinsky. They're the top. Reynolds is by Allison average, by defensive run save, by most metrics you look at, the worst defender in baseball. And Jack Swinsky's a bottom 10. And if you add Rooker, he's worse than Reynolds. So you're looking at the bottom eight defenders in baseball in your outfield. So I feel like if you get a Rooker, you also have to get a center fielder who can play defense and hit the ball to actually give you an upgrade from Sawinski and Michael A. Taylor. So like that's what it presents to me. Rooker's going to cost you a lot, and if you do so, you also have to get a center fielder where I feel like if you just almost get – I was Tyler's talking about a league average center fielder and a league average right fielder. It's not going to cost you a ton. You upgrade both places. And you're able to upgrade it probably about the same without making as much of a uh, an impact to your farm system, I guess, if that makes sense. Like what it's going to cost you to get Rooker is not going to be worth the return where you can spend the same capital and probably get a better fit, better player. That's just not out there. So I think looking at it all, I don't know if there's a guy out there that doesn't have warts that the Pirates could acquire at this point. All of them have their own sort of problems. Rooker, for example, we talked about the defense, and I think you're looking at a guy that probably will have to move the first base to remain at least usable on your roster here at some point. And I think we have kind of sort of hinted at the same situation with Brian Reynolds. Like at some point, you're not going to be able to continue to play him in the outfield. If you have a Brent Rooker and you have a Brian Reynolds, that makes it a little bit difficult. Um, so I understand there being some problems with acquiring him there. You, the right-handed power bat, though, there aren't many out there. I don't think he's going to be that expensive. But, I mean, maybe he is. Maybe I'm wrong there. I just love the prospect of having that right-handed power bat to slide into this lineup with the amount of lefty bats that they have. I think there's a better fit. That's as far fair. as a right-handed power bat that plays the same position. That's fair. Somebody's Just trying fair. to get his PowerPoint <laughs> up right now. What I will say, though, Winker, absolutely not good defensively as well. So, right. like, this is kind of the point I'm getting with here also. If you want to go Brent Rucker, who's bad defensively also, and again, I mentioned, like, you, I feel like you have to get a center fielder, but the, the cost of Rooker is going to cost a lot. So, like, is it wise to go all in with Rooker and give up top prospects to land him and have this terrible defense? Or is it smarter to upgrade two positions and go a Jazz and a rental? Like, what if you got a Jazz and a Winker? That, to me, is going to cost you less than what one Rooker is going to do. You upgrade two positions. You're still better defensively now also. You know I mean, like, to me, that's more sound. You've upgraded. You less than cost, you know, as far as prospect capital. And you're just now a more sound team as well. The corners are bad, but at least you have jazz in there to, you know, help either side out a little bit more. And you know what? Paul Skeens isn't pissed off when his offense gives a, gives him zero runs in the ninth inning and Brent Rooker can't get to an easy pop-up and now the Atlanta Braves win the wild card. You know what I mean? Like that's that's part of it. So like that's what I'm alluding to here. I I don't mind Brent Rooker, but I feel like the cost of getting him, it's just gonna be wise to go get a Jazz and a Winker for less and upgrade, you know, two spots in that sense. 